All right, and welcome to graphing all inverse functions. So guys, this will be the summation of all the things that we've learned, and you should be able to graph all these things individually. This will be a rather long video, as I'm going to show you one example of graphing each inverse function. But what I would ask you to do is go through the problems, and anything that you don't know, then come back and look for it, and, and I'll be labeling all of these functions as we go. So uh, for example, example one, I'm gonna let y'all know, hey, this is a linear function, okay, this is linear, and on all of these, from this point on, I want you to assume that we are not finding, but how about this, we are graphing, we are graphing f inverse of x. Okay, so for our very first example, let's just go ahead and say, you know what, we have f of x is equal to, uh, let's give ourselves a fraction, 2x minus 3. That won't be entirely nice. And so what would it look like to graph this function? Well, of course, we know our very first step, we change f of x into y, and we can say, well, y is equal to 2x minus 3. Oh, sloppy colors there. And let's just go ahead, our next step, we know we take our x and our y, we switch them. And of course, guys, this should be so familiar at this point. We have x is equal to 2y minus 3. And of course, now we solve for y. So we will you know, start this off by saying, you know what, we're going to add 3, add 3. Notice I'm doing a different color for every new operation, so now we have x plus 3 is equal to 2y. And of course, our final step here is we will divide both sides by 2. And remember, we always take our y value and we want to rewrite it as f inverse of x, and then of course is equal to, in this case, x plus 3 over 2. Now, that is the simplest way to write out the function, but what would be a, a better way to graph this? Well, you want to write it out somewhat as f inverse of x is equal to 1 over 2. Remember, there's a 1 there, so 1 over 2 x plus 3 over 2. That would be a lot easier to graph. Now, because we've graphed so many linear functions this year, I'm not going to draw a large graph. Y'all should get this. 3 over 2 is another way of saying 1.5, and so we're going to go say, well, there's 1, there's 2, and there's, of course, 1.5. And our slope is 1 over 2. Let me just kind of highlight that, 1 over 2. So we're saying, you know, uh, we're going to go up 1 and to the right 2, and you just kind of have to keep it, you know, every time you go up 1, you're keeping it halfway in between the tick marks. Okay, and then, of course, we could do one more. And so it'll be you know halfway up and two over, and there is our f inverse of x. Y'all can pretend I hit all those points. Okay. All right, guys, and that was linear. So let's go on to our example two, which will be a quadratic in vertex form. Okay, here we have a quadratic in vertex form. F of x is equal to x minus four squared plus two. And let's do all the typical things. We know we'll change f of x into y is equal to x minus 4 squared plus 2. We know that our next step is to take our x and our y and to flip them. All right. And so minus 4 squared plus 2. And from here, well, let's do everything we can to get y by itself. We know we will get rid of our addition or subtraction first always and forever. So we have x minus 2 is equal to y minus 14 squared. And from here, how do you get rid of a square? Well, guys, you know this. The inverse of a square is a square root. And at this point, um, oh, I'm sorry, I should have done that in a different color. There we go. Why not? Nice little gold. And so now we have the square root of x minus 2 is equal to y minus 14. Remember, those things cancel. And of course, our final little step here is to add 14 to both sides. Now from here, let's say this. You know what? Y is by itself. And so we're going to say, well, you know, Y is by itself. We change Y back into F inverse of X because it's now our inverse function is equal to the square root of X minus 2 plus 14 on the outside. Recall that we look, where does that x make the internal grouping equal to zero? And if you were to say x minus two equals zero, well then of course x must be a positive two. And then we have our positive 14 out there. 
Now this allows us, notice I kind of kind of made this a little difficult on myself. This allows us to say, okay, we're going to go to the right two, one, two, and up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's pretend that's fourteen. I might have I might have miscounted there. But so to the right two, up fourteen. And what in the world does a hold that thought? What in the world does a oh come on now? What in the world does a square root function look like? Well, we know it's something like that. All right, remember, this is, these are previous lessons, and this is just a big recap of how in the world do you graph all these things. All right, let's move on to our next um, thing that we'll graph, and we're going to graph the inverse of a square root function. Okay, here we have example three. We have f of x is equal to the square root of x minus three plus two on the outside. So we know our very first step, of course, we change f of x into y, and we'll say, you know what, y is equal to the square root of x minus 3 plus 2. And guys, I'm sorry about switching from this blue color to this teal color. Uh, I need to get a little bit more precise here. Now we know our very next step is to take our x and our y and to flip-flop them. And so we'll say x is equal to the square root of y minus 3 plus 2. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. And we now have x minus 2 is equal to the square root of y minus 3. Now from there, remember, how in the world are we going to get rid of this square root? What is the opposite of a square root? Well, of course, this would be to square both sides. The opposite of a square root is to square. All right, and of course, those cancel. And now we could say this. We have now x minus 2 squared is equal to y minus 3. And of course, guys, our final step is to add 3 to both sides. And at this point, we can graph and say, you know what? y becomes f inverse of x is equal to our final function, which is x minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, now recall, it's this x value right here you know, we're taking this grouping, setting it equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0. And, of course, the value of x there would be a positive 2 again, comma 3. And this one will be much easier for me to graph. Now, one thing. This is our vertex, 2, comma 3. Go to the right, 1, 2, up, 1, 2, 3. There's our vertex point. And you have to ask yourself, well, is, I'm sorry, is this positive or negative? Since we don't see anything in front of the parentheses, we assume it is a positive. And we know that square root functions, remember, or I'm sorry, square functions. Guys, I'm sorry, this, this color is kind of messing up. Square functions, or quadratics as they're really known, uh, are the U shape. And when they're positive, they open up. All right, guys, I've got two more examples for y'all, and let's move forward. Okay, here we have example four, which is cube root functions. So we want to find the inverse of a cube root function. Okay, so we know we're going to switch f of x into y. We'll say, you know what, y is equal to the cube root of x plus 6 minus 2. And here, of course, our big idea for inverses is we take our x and our y, and we switch them, switched over. All right, so we say x is equal to the cube root of y plus 6 minus 2. Now recall, at this point, we want to go ahead and get the y value by itself. We always get rid of our addition or our subtraction first. Okay, and so we'll say, you know what, we got this whole x plus 2 thing going on. It's equal to the cube root of y plus 6. Now from here, we're going to get rid of the cube root. Think about this. How do you get rid of a cube root. What is the opposite of a cube? Root. You guys remember, you just take the word root off, you cube it. <laughs> the opposite of a cube root is a cube. All right, for some reason, this has been the, the biggest struggle of the year, getting students to understand the inverse of certain operations. Okay, so we have x plus 2 cubed is equal to y plus 6. And now from here, we're going to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides. And once we have that by itself, we can say, you know what, y is now f inverse of x is equal to, I'm not going to mess up the coloring this time, 
x plus 2 cubed minus 6. Now notice here, this is actually x plus 2 here. We set that equal to 0. And when we do that, we find out that, well, let me not write that. We find out that our x value will always become the opposite of what we see. So we have negative 2 comma negative 6 as our vertex. Now from here, let's say we graph this, negative 2 comma negative 6. So I need a little space down to the left. So I'll go to the left 2 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's our point. The question should be, how do I graph a cubic function? Because I want you all to notice this is, in fact, a cubic function. We talked about this a long time ago. It kind of comes up, it flattens out, and then it goes up again. And so that that's something that we've touched upon, I would say, two or three times throughout the year. But there you have it. That's what it's going to look like. Easy, easy. All right, guys, let's move on to our final example. All right, here we have our final example, example five. We're going to find the inverse function of a quartic function, and you could also call this a function to the fourth power. All right, so what's this going to look like? Well, the steps are exactly the same. f of x becomes y. And we can say y is equal to x minus 1 to the fourth power plus 5. Of course, here we're going to take our x and our y and flip-flop them. And now x is equal to y minus 1 to the fourth power plus 5. Now from here, let's go ahead and solve for y. We know our very first step. We're going to get rid of the plus 5 by minus 5. It goes away. And we now have x minus 5 is equal to y minus 1 to the fourth power. Now recall, how do you get rid of the fourth power? Well, you swap the word power for root. So the opposite of the fourth power is the fourth root. And what does that look like? Well, we, we draw the square root symbol with a 4. We take the fourth root of both sides. Now from there, those cancel. We have the fourth root of x minus 5 is equal to y minus 1. Remember, to get rid of that minus 1, we're going to have to add 1 to both sides. And y is gone. <clears throat> and we now have this. Instead of y, we have our f inverse of x is equal to our function, which is the fourth root of x minus 5 plus 1. OK. Now from here, this one gets a little bit tricky. And I actually want to show you the most accurate way to graph this. So I'm going to pause all this. So notice, you know, here was our original function. Here is our inverse function. You've never seen anything like this. Uh, let me clean all this up so I can show you how to graph something to the, the nth root. Anything to the nth root, you can use this following method. Okay, how do you graph anything to the nth root? Well, the, the trick here is we want this to become a perfect integer. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, um, what you would say is like, what are my poor, perfect fourth roots? And how do we do that? Well, we say, okay, we have 0 to the fourth power is equal to 0. We have 1 to the fourth power is 1. By the way, guys, to the fourth power means you're multiplying, multiplying it by itself four times. So 0 times 0 times 0 times 0 is still 0. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1, and it's not until we get to 2 to the 4th power that we actually get a, a different number, so to speak. So what is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Well, two, that's 4 2's, so 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times the 3rd 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and times 2 again is 16. Alright, and so we get 16. So what's the trick here? Well, we want to take our internal grouping that whole x minus 5, x minus 5, x minus 5, and we want to set it equal to these perfect fourth roots. I think that's how you say that. So we say x minus 5, we'll set that equal to 0. x minus 5 equal to 1. x minus 5 equal to 16. And when we do this, let's go ahead and see what happens. So I add 5, oh, come on now. I add 5 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 5 because 0 plus 5 is of course 5. 
All right, I add five right there, I add five right there, and one plus five is equal to six, that's nice. And then I add five, and I add five, and 16 plus five, well, x is equal to 21. Perfect. Okay, so it turns out these are the three x values that we would like to use in order to try to start graphing this inverse function, or this fourth root function. Say, so, okay, well, you know what? x is going to equal to 5, 6, and 21. Perfect. Okay. Now from here, let's go ahead and tackle the rest of this. So we're going to say, you know what? Let's see. We, we really have, um, what's the best way to do this? We're going to start by saying, you know what? f of the f inverse of x is equal to the fourth root of x minus 5 plus 1. And what's the first value that we're going to plug in here? Well, of course, the first value that we're going to plug in is going to be 5. So f of 5, 5. And let's go ahead and work this out. So now I have f inverse of 5 is equal to the fourth root. 5 minus 5 is 0 plus 1. The fourth root of 0 is 0 plus 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. So when we plug in 5 into this inverse function, guess what? We get... 1. And so I say, you know what? Well, y is equal to 1, comma. Okay. What if we do this again? But now instead of 5, we're going to plug in our very next value. Our very next value is that 6. So I plug in my 6, plug in my 6. Kind of redo the parts that I accidentally erased here. And let's work this out. We have f inverse of 6 is equal to the fourth root of 6 minus 5 is 1 plus 1. The fourth root of 1 is 1 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Guys, this is just basic algebra. You should feel pretty confident about this. So our next y value is 2, comma. Now this next one will be the kind of tricky one, I think, but let's, let's find out. And guys, I hope that you're pausing this to get these things written down. Okay, let's see. And we see here, we're going to use 21. 21 and 21. Okay. So I have f inverse of 21 is equal to the fourth root. 21 minus 5 is 16 plus 1. What's the fourth root of 16? Well, we know that's 2 plus 1. And 2 plus 1 is 3. Well, this worked out pretty nice. And so our final value is 3. That's kind of weird how that worked out, but it it did. Okay, from here, we've got to graph this guy now. So how in the world are we going to graph this? Well, we are going to take our three sets of points, and we know that these guys essentially make up, here we have, come on, color. Here we have 5, comma 1. Here, oh yeah. Here we have the point 6 comma 2 and here we have our final point 21 comma 3 and so this graph will look something like this there's my x and y axis but I'm just using quadrant 1 and because I've got so far to go to the right in fact let me even count this out 1 2 in yeah that's fine 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20, 21, and of course up 1, 2, 3. And it turns out our points are going to look something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, and then we're going to go to the right 6, and up 2, and then we're going to go all the way to the right up 21, right there, and our graph will look something like that. Alright, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a long video, but I hope that you just went part by part by part. Good luck with this, guys. And I'll catch y'all in our next lesson.